Hey beauties, welcome back to my channel. Today we're doing a full face of Chanel Le Beige makeup and I will be sharing an in-depth comparison between the Le Beige Cream Bronzer shades. So here I have the original 390, the brand new 392, this is new this summer. It will be launching in the US on June 15th, I'm told. And then this is 395. This was the deeper shade that they launched last year. In my original review, I shared swatches so you could see all three shades next to each other. And it is nice to see the color really built up. That way you get a better idea of the undertone. But unless you are planning on not blending out your cream bronzer, it really doesn't tell you what it's going to look like on the face with a full face of makeup. So that is truly the purpose of today's video. Right now, the only thing I have on my face other than moisturizer is the Le Beige Healthy Glow Foundation for hydration and long wear. And my Chanel shade is B30. So I typically wear a B30 or a medium light in all of my Chanel face products. So this is B30, it's the only thing on my face. And I'm gonna go ahead and do a full face of Le Beige and I'm gonna start with 390. I'm gonna apply all of these products in the typical order. So first I always go in with my foundation and then I like to go in with my concealer and then bronzer. So first I'm going to blend this out using the Chanel Corrector in B10. You can see that corrector really brightened up the center areas of the face, the under eye area that's gonna help to color correct any darkness I have under my eyes. And now we're gonna go in with the Le Beige Cream Bronzer, shade 390. This is the Soleil Tan Bronze Universal. This was the very first shade they brought out with the new formula. And I am going to apply that with this Laura Geller foundation brush. I find it to be the perfect shape for cream cheeks. really wiggle it in there so you can certainly see it it's a very natural looking bronze Gonna bring it up on my forehead, especially the hairline. I'm also going to apply a little bit on my chin and jawline as well, not much. Because naturally the sun is really going to hit you on your forehead and the tops of the cheeks. It's not really going to hit your chin, depending on your face shape. This is more of a contour area, but I still like to have a little color there. It looks really well blended, but I always like to go back just in case, kind of blend right above, right below with my original foundation brush or sometimes my concealer brush, just to make sure it looks perfectly blended. Sometimes in the viewfinder or even in the mirror because I have so many lights shining on me, I think it looks great. And then later on I realized that it looked very harsh. So it's just kind of better to play it safe. I'm gonna scoot in nice and close so you can really see what this looks like with just my foundation, concealer, and cream bronzer. This is 390 Universal Bronze. I wanna finish the face, so now I'm going to set my concealer using my Le Beige Healthy Glow Sheer Powder. I use shade 10. And you can see this is an ultra sheer powder. Right around here, there's a little bit of a dull, almost crust that forms. And that happens because it is so finely milled. If you get any moisture in this compact, whether it's moisture from your skin, from your foundation, maybe a little moisture gets in the brush hairs, especially if it's a natural hairbrush, it can sometimes create a little bit of a film on top of the powder. So you have to be careful. I do the best I can, but it's kind of inevitable and you just kind of scratch it right off. So not a big deal. It's certainly not a deal breaker for me. I love these compact powders and it's meant to just set the face. So this is not going to give you coverage, but it's kind of nice. You can throw it in your bag. You can take it with you, throw it in your purse. If you are somebody who needs to touch up throughout the day, maybe you get oily. 
but it does a pretty great job setting the makeup. I never really feel like I need to go back and touch up. There is a Le Beige Healthy Glow Cream Blush Stick. Unfortunately, I don't have it in my collection. That is something that I've added to my list of products that I'd like to pick up once my no-buy is over. So today I'm just gonna go in with In Love. It's one of my favorite Chanel blushes. It's kind of the perfect warm pink. It's great for every single day. There are five shades of that cream blush stick. I had to double check. I wasn't sure if they were still available because I don't really hear people talking about them. They've also been around for a while. But sure enough, they're on the website. So now I'm curious. To highlight my cheeks, I have the Le Beige Sheer Healthy Glow Highlighting Fluid in the shade Pearly Glow. And I am just going to pump a little bit of that on the back of my hands. And I have this Sephora 57 brush. I'm just gonna kind of swirl around in there. This is a very subtle highlighter, but using the brush, I'm just gonna tap very lightly on the tops of the cheeks. And it goes on so easily. Doesn't break up the foundation underneath. Doesn't matter that I already powdered the face. For eyes today, I want to keep it really simple and natural, so I pulled out my Le Beige Healthy Glow Natural Eyeshadow Palette in the shade Intense. I purchased this last year. I think it was the Le Beige collection last year. It's just a very pretty, warm, bronzy palette. It's kind of perfect for bronze goddess summer makeup. With a flat brush, I'm going to pick up the top shade, this really pretty champagne gold, and I am going to apply that to the lid. It goes on almost sheer, but you can see there's a little bit of a sparkle to it, which is really nice. Because it just reflects light, it looks really pretty. This would be a nice one and done eyeshadow if you just wanted to put a little something on the lids and that's it. You could dab this on with your fingers and get out the door. With a Refer 14 brush, I'm picking up this shade down here and I am going to buff a little bit of that in the outer lid, outer V, outer crease area, just to add a little something something. I'm going so light, I didn't even need to go back with the fluffy brush. I just sort of used the same brush once the product had been distributed. To finish the eyes, I quickly filled in my eyebrows, did a teeny tiny bit of brown liquid eyeliner, baby wing, and then a little light coat of mascara, and then I fixed my hair off camera as well. The last step is lips. I'm going in with this Rouge Coco Balm in the shade 918 My Rose. This is a really pretty light pink shade. I also really love Natural Charm, but this is kind of happy for spring. And that's basically it. I'd say this is my typical light makeup routine. It's certainly not a no makeup makeup on days that I'm really pressed for time and trying to get out the door. I won't do half as many steps. I certainly won't do a full complexion. But I think makeup like this is nice over the summer because it still looks very light and fresh. Even though we did the face, we don't have a lot going on on the eyes. We don't have heavy mascara or eyeliner. A very light natural lip. It's perfect for maybe a beach weekend, maybe a dinner out that's very casual a day out, running errands, any occasion where you want to look put together, fresh faced and natural, but you're still going to take the time to kind of go through the motions a little bit. So this is my full face of Le Beige using the 390 Soleil Tan Bronze Universal Cream Bronzer. But I wanna see what this exact makeup look would look like using the 392 and the 395. So now I'm going to be very careful. I'm gonna wipe off this entire complexion and I'm going to go through the process again, this time with the brand new shade 392.
I cleaned off all of the original foundation from my face and I've reset my makeup so that now I have my base, the B30 and the Le Beige, and my concealer done. So this is exactly where I started the bronzer the first time around, except now I'm going in with 392, Sole Tan Medium Bronze. I did say that I was a little bit disappointed in this shade because I couldn't see a huge difference between the two. You can certainly see that there is a difference between the 390 and the 392, but I wish it was a little bit more of a jump or I wish the 392 was more of a central shade. And I don't think it is. I think it's one, maybe a half step darker than the 390. But you can tell there's something different about it. I think it might be just the intensity level, maybe the pigment, the undertone, I'm not sure. So I'm gonna go ahead and this time I'm going to use the BK Beauty 106 brush. I wanted to use a clean brush just in case. So now I'm going to apply the 392. I don't feel like I need to go in for more product. With the 390, when I'm applying it, I feel like I need to go in a couple of times to the tub, but I don't feel like I need any more for this side. It blends so seamlessly on the skin. I feel like I can tell a difference between the two all over the face. I feel like this one is definitely darker. I'm curious to watch the video back because it's difficult for me to see in this little viewfinder. But when I load the video and I compare all three sides, then I'll truly be able to see a difference. And I'm gonna go back quickly and just um, blend the way I normally would. This is the foundation, concealer, and cream bronzer shade 392. I'm going to finish my makeup the exact same way, starting with my Le Beige powder in shade 10. Just going to set the concealer. In Love Blush. And to highlight, I'm going back with the Sheer Healthy Glow Highlighting Fluid in Pearly Glow. And I'm going to apply this to the tops of the cheeks. This is the complete makeup look with bronzer shade 392. Let me know down in the comments section, what do you think? Is there a big difference between these shades? For the third and final time, I've reset my makeup so that I'm just wearing foundation and concealer, and now I'm going in with 395 Sole Tan Deep Bronze. This is currently the deepest shade we have, and I'm hoping this trend continues and that Chanel releases an update, a new shade every year, each summer, until they come out with enough. So this is 395. It is definitely very dark. Not the ideal shade for me. I knew that when I purchased it, but I just wanted it to compare because at the time this came out, there were only two. I can't make it work because it's such a thin formula. So I'm going to apply this with a BK Beauty 101 travel brush. It's another clean brush. So I'm just going to pick up a little bit of product and do my best to just kind of shear this out and make it work. I think the undertone is so different on this one. It looks far more red and rich. It doesn't look red on the skin, but it, just the undertone is a little bit more red.
And then I definitely need to go back. I'm using my Sigma concealer brush. I'm just blending the under eye, blending all around. And then I'm gonna go ahead and quickly finish up my makeup so we can compare the final looks. Right now, I am tempted to say 392 is my favorite, the new shade. I'm excited to watch this video back and see if there is a noticeable difference. I feel like there might be, maybe not so much between 390 and 392, but 395 it looks so different. But on the skin, does it look that different? I'm curious to see what all three shades look like with the finished makeup. I think the biggest lesson of today's video is probably what we all knew all along, which is that Chanel needs way more shades than just these three. I'm so happy that they're continuing to bring out new shades, but if I can make all three of these work, that's a pretty good indicator that there's not nearly enough variety here. And I did my best, this wasn't scientific by any stretch, but I did my best to apply a decent amount of product each time. It's not like with the 395, I didn't go in with nearly the same amount I just made sure to blend it out but it, it does it goes on pretty sheer and then of course you could build it up if you wanted to but because they have coconut oil in them I'm not sure you it's a the type of product that you really want to build up on the face you should be able to go in with a very light layer just you know add a, a touch of warmth to the complexion and then be done with it which is why they last such a long time Another lesson I've learned is that I don't need to purchase any more bronzers for a really long time. At least not until I go through at least one of these. And I still have the original Soleil Tan de Chanel, so I really need to get to work. And that completes today's video. Thank you so much for watching. Hopefully you enjoyed it and it was helpful to see the comparisons between shades. Not just swatches, but with makeup done for the day. If you liked the video, give it a thumbs up. Leave me your comments, questions down below. As always, I will be linking everything mentioned. Everything on my face will be listed down below in the description box for your convenience. And for more videos like this, don't forget to subscribe and hit the notification bell.